Okay. Hey everybody, this is Michelle from the Milton Public Library and I'm coming to you today with two special guests who are joining me to talk about study skills. And they are from the University of Vermont. I'm going to let them tell you a little bit about themselves before we get started. So Mark, I'll let you get started. Awesome. So my name is Mark Oet. I'm a med student along with Victor at the um, University of Vermont Med School. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, and I went to college um, at Swarthmore College near Philadelphia. And we're both here today to just talk, uh, kind of share some of what we know um, and you know, see how that's applicable to you guys, see whatever you can glean from it um, for your own time in middle school, high school, or as you're going to college. Awesome. And Victor, how would you like to in introduce yourself, please? Yeah, uh, my name is Victor Abraham. I, uh, I was born in New York City, but I grew up mostly in Jersey. Uh, I went to uh, NYU for undergraduate. And um, as Mark said, we're both medical students here. At, uh, we go to UVM, it's the Lerner College of Medicine. Um, and yeah, we're just going to give any insight we can. Um, whatever, whatever we can offer to help you guys go forward in life, that is, that is what we're here for. Awesome. We really appreciate your willingness to do this because I know, I know that you have lots of information to share with us today. So I'm excited to get started. So I'm going to introduce the first question. The first question is, how do you organize your work? Yeah, I can start. I can go off. Um, so for me, it always changed a little bit from middle school to high school to college. Uh, but I could kind of start like where I really started was in, in uh, high school. High school, I kind of got down to using accordion folders. Um, I always wanted to make sure I never missed homework and I wanted to make sure all my paperwork was in order. Um, so whatever, whatever my classes were for that week, I would put them in order. First one, say Monday morning was math and then Tuesday had this one. And then Wednesday was like language arts. Uh, I would put the homework and whatever papers I had due in that. And then as things were done and I received them back, it would transfer from the accordion folder to maybe a three-ring binder or uh, any, anywhere else where I really kept the paperwork that I wasn't currently using. But for me, it was really important to make sure I got all my homework done and have a very clear way to see if I had homework. I'd be able to go home, open it up, look inside and be like, oh, okay, yes, I have math homework, I have language homework, I don't have anything else. So I'd pull those out, get those done and then return them back. So when I get to class, I could just easily pull them out. Um, as I got to college, it kind of transformed more to online things and uh, getting folders and color coordinated. Uh, but something else I really wanted to say is that uh, what really works for me is having different pens and different colored pens. So when I would look at something, I would read it the first time and maybe the first pass through something like a textbook or anything I can write in would be in black. And then as I review it with a friend or something, I make more notes, second one would be in blue. And then right before I take the test and I'm studying again, if I would notice anything else, it'd be in like green or red or something, got different color, just so I can go back and see like, okay, this note is here and this one's from here and this is what my friend told me. Just so I had like a kind of a way of organizing my thoughts on a piece of paper. Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of how, how I organize it. And I, uh, even in medical school, I still use four or five different colored pens when I'm learning a subject. Um, but that, that you kind of get your own, but that, that's how I really saw organizing it from high school, undergraduate until now. Awesome, that's great information. Mark, how about you? How do you organize your work? I have a pretty different method, although I kind of have the same thing where the way that I've studied has like totally changed depending on where I am in school. So from like high school to college to now, I've done three different systems, but in high school, I liked having three ring binders, one for each subject, and I would keep hole punched paper inside of it so that whenever I was in class, like I didn't need to carry any separate notebooks. I just had my paper in my binder and I could kind of organize things chronologically from the beginning and just keep, keep adding pages to it. Um, I also really liked using like a little notepads, like a sticky note system where I would put notes on top of my binders and I would do that every day during class and just write out like what is what's the thing that I really need to do like what's the to do for that class so it would be like 
the homework due for the very next time. So I could just take out my binder and I wouldn't need to struggle to remember what I had going on. I also really like taking notes online as far as keeping track of like longer term assignments. So for me, that was something that was helpful was like split up the homework for the week, which I would do with the sticky notes versus things that are due like two weeks from now or some type of project. Other people might just kind of have their own like all in one system. I kind of like splitting that up. And also just to add, um, as we kind of like, if anyone else has questions, uh, we can always reach out back, but um, we also do a lot of OneNote and a lot of um, online resources, which are also really helpful. I don't know if, if y'all are getting into that now at this age, because I feel a lot of schools, at least high school is gonna start that way, but there are a lot of nice programs online if you do wanna get into that. There's OneNote, there's Evernote. Um, a lot of like understanding, like it, it, it takes, it, there's, a, there's a learning curve to them, but they're also really helpful. As you get older, uh, I don't think Mark or, Mark or I used those in middle school or high school, but definitely as you get um, into college, those are good. And also maybe keeping like a calendar uh, would also be helpful to tell you what dates your tests are. Um, but again, those are more for maybe undergrad and if you guys are starting to go to college, something to think about. Um, but again, it's all up to you guys. This is just what really helped us. Cool, I can tell you that I have, I've had high school children and college children and they definitely have used a calendar as well as some of your, um, some of your same techniques for organization. So those are really, really good pieces of information. So let's see, do you use any online study tools, which I think maybe you were just talking about a little bit, Victor. So um, I know that Quizlet is one that perhaps um, some students have used. Do you have any experience with that? Yeah, um, I can shout out to Quizlet. Uh, it was a lifesaver for me in college. Uh, I mean, as you get older, like I'm using a more advanced version of Quizlet, but it's still um, flashcards and going over them and keeping them organized. And there was one class I took, it was called Intro to the Language of Robotics. And interesting enough, it was a language class. It was about the history of the writing of computers and sci-fi. It was really cool, but there's a lot of authors we had to memorize. Um, so one thing I did in the beginning was like, I just came up with a Quizlet and I was like, okay, this author had this quote and this author had this quote. And I gave it to my class. I was like, guys, I'm making this. And then they, they were able to edit it too. So at the end, we had this whole huge Quizlet of like all the information we learned in the class. We literally gave it to the professor at the end, like, hey, put this in your... Uh, for other students as they come by. And I think he still uses it to this day. My little sister's in NYU and she said that it was on the syllabus. So uh, Quizlet's amazing and it can be a lifesaver and you can use it with a lot of people. Uh, but just in general, I think uh, flashcards are really the way to go if for things like that. Um, you get to go through the material, you get to you know go through it over and over again, really understand the different pieces. But if, if you're not using, that's good for like language or bio or chemistry, things like that. But for math, I would always recommend doing practice problems. You know, you sit down with like, I don't know, 100 problems that are pretty hard and you go through them. And once you get all the answers, you go through them again and be like, why is this one right? Why is this one wrong? Kind of like really reinforce it. I feel memo for math and maybe even advanced chemistry. That's really the way to go for those. But for things that are more route memorization, like biology or language, um, I would go Quizlet. I don't know. Mark, what do you think? Uh, I to totally agree with both those things. I use Quizlet all the time, especially for languages. Um, just when you have tons of words to memorize, like that, that was like the original thing it's made for. And, you know, it's useful for so many things, but definitely any language you take. Um, and then for math and chem, I, uh, I just feel like you have to do practice problems. Like I know that for myself, there were times when I like thought I knew something. I like paid attention in class and I was like, okay, I'm good. Then the test came and I was, it was just, you know, that classic situation where you thought you knew it and then it's time to do it and you can't do it. And that's what practice, that's what practice questions are meant to avoid. So like, it's definitely key. If your teacher gives you practice tests, like go over them, love them, like talk to your professor about, or talk to your teacher about stuff that you get wrong. And I just think that like, I wish that I took advantage of practice questions more when I was in high school. Cause like whatever subject you're doing, it's probably not unique. Like 
they have practice tests on the internet from other schools or from colleges or something that are going over the exact same material. So I feel like even if your teacher is not giving you that many practice questions, like you can always find it. And just taking advantage of that, like kind of the network of stuff that other people have already put out there is so helpful. I, I'm going to um, echo both of your thoughts, especially on the math um, part of this, because I know when my kids were younger, I homeschooled my kids. So um, they would take tests or have quizzes or whatever, and they would get things wrong. And they would be very upset with me because I'd make them go back and correct their incorrect problems. But that's how they learned. And sometimes we get really down on ourselves when we make when we do make mistakes however instead of seeing it as a failure we should see it as opportunity to be able to correct and that helps us to learn more fully um what it is that we're studying for so um yeah. go ahead to, to add on that um i don't know if you guys know about kumon but um that's like a daycare type of like it was also a lot of like practice problems in math my sister was born dyslexic and uh, I also had mm -hmm. minor learning problems. And my mom was like, all right, how do I make sure these kids aren't gonna fail out of school? She put us in this after day program and literally all we did every day for three or four hours was just practice problems. Here's math, here's reading, here's math, here's reading. Read, read this chapter for me as fast as you can out loud. And mm -hmm. I was like, out loud, no. I was like a little <laughs> six year old freaking out. But I, I, like, I go back and thank her. Like, I was like, mom, like, my sister's a lawyer and I'm, I'm gonna be a doctor soon. Like, I was like, without, without like all the work that it took, uh, we don't know if we would have been here. Um, yeah, I 100% agree that it is hard and it is bothersome, but as Mark was saying, you can reach out. Uh, as Michelle was saying, you can always like, there's so much resources available to you and they're, your um, teachers are always willing to help. Maybe family members are down to help too. Like it's just, you got you to gotta use what you can while you have it. And I don't think anyone will ever shame you for trying to learn more. True. Okay. Next question, guys. How, this one's a good one. And I know a lot of the students are probably going to be really interested in your answers. How do you balance school with sports and social life? Mark. I'm going first. Um, I feel like... You know, I've talked to Victor about this before and we kind of have our, like, our similar, similar solution, which um, for me was like finding that thing that you want to do, like whatever it is, whether it's hanging out with your friends or like time for yourself, like working out and put that into your schedule. Like it's a non-negotiable item. You know, like when I was in high school, I wanted to start working out and I felt like, how am I going to have the motivation to do this consistently? Like, I know I want to do it, but I just, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to. And I treated it like it was a class in school, which could sound like a bad thing, but it really helped me because I felt like I'm not scheduling anything else from like 3 to 4.30 p.m. or 8 to 9.30 p.m., whatever it is. And I just said like, this is in my calendar, I'm going to do it. And I felt like putting it in my calendar, it was like, I always had that like stability throughout the week. I knew that after whatever work I had to do, like there was my fun thing and there was my like thing that I was doing for me. And it's like, when you've scheduled it in, you always, like you always have that to look forward to and it's consistent. So that was kind of what I would do. Cool. Victor, yeah. do you have anything to add? Yeah. Um, so when I was in maybe college, I heard this quote and I'm paraphrasing now, but it's very Ernest Hemingway and he basically stated that like he makes a plan every two weeks or every month to go fishing because like, if he doesn't make that plan he's not going to go fishing and he loves to fish right um also if you never read Ernest Hemingway he's one of my favorite authors just mm -hmm. go read a book by him it's amazing it is hard to get through sometimes but it is one of the best writings I've ever read anyway um so that kind of took that to heart that was like all right if I really want to enjoy my time off I have to plan for it. And same thing what Mark was saying, you got to schedule it in. Um, so for, for high school, for example, I was part of the Boy Scouts. I played football and I also played guitar um, and had some volunteering things. Uh, the only way I really made sure I had days off from all of that was like Friday nights 
was when I'm going to go to my friend's house, we're going to go play football in the park, we're going to go skateboarding, whatever, whatever we're doing. Like I made sure that night was always free for me and my friends. Cause I know even in high school, like I need to recharge a little bit, you know, like there's a lot of studying and there's a lot of sports and a lot of extracurricular activities. You know, you want to get into a good school, yada, yada. I made sure to always have that plan in. And even now, right. Well, I think before this talk, we were talking about like how I have a couple of projects going on this week, but one of my friends, uh, hit me up and they were like, hey, I want to hang out. I'm like, great, let's schedule a time because I do want to see you. I just don't know. I don't want to, you know, push something to the side and also not give you enough time. Like, I want to make sure whatever I'm doing is I'm always giving my 100% in it. Um, whether it's to fishing, like Ernest Hanway, whether it's to hang out with a friend, whether it's working on one of my projects or doing homework. Um, I kind of want to schedule the time. You want to build a habit. You want to really get in the groove of always giving yourself 100% in whatever you're doing. Uh, multitasking is very important, but I think uh, really focusing on what you're doing and the task at hand, you're going to finish it faster. And you're going to enjoy it more, no matter what that is. Yeah, I just really, that like last thing that Victor said is something I've been thinking about recently for my med school work, where I'm like, multitasking can be a good thing, but I find that I have a lot more time when I just focus on one thing more. So like, if I'm going on Facebook and I'm looking at my phone and I'm like talking to some people while I'm trying to do flashcards or like work for school, it feels like it's taking the whole day to get through my work. And if I just sit down and I like set a little timer, like I'm going to be undisturbed for 25 minutes and I just do a bunch of blocks of that, I feel like I get through my work in three hours or two and a half hours and then I have the whole rest of the day it's just like magical how like focusing actually gives you more time and then like I do all the other stuff I want to do kind of guilt-free because I'm I just feel like hey I've already done like what I set out to do and just really like telling yourself and like just understanding the benefit of focusing like it's something I still work on now so it's like it's not an easy skill you know you want to do other things or like text your friends but it's definitely rewarding to just be able to like lock down and focus and then have more time to do other things later. Makes a lot of sense. So um, next question. This is another really good one. How do you get motivated to work on a class you're not particularly interested in? And we've all had those. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, that is most of high school for me before I really decided that I wanted to become medicine or do medicine. It was just, um, it was a lot of like, well, I want to do so much, but at the same time, I'm just so tired, right? Uh, what really helped me was kind of like fix my eyes on the finish line type of thing. I don't know if you guys heard that saying before, but it's do everything with like a goal in mind, right? It can be a short-term goal. Like I want to finish this homework in the next hour and I'm going to focus on, it, I'm going to finish it. Or it can be like, you know what, I want to do, you know, I want to do better on this next test to prove it to myself that I can do that. Um, and a little aside from that is when you're, when you're making those goals for yourself, make sure it's always against your previous self and never, never against other people, right? If you're constantly comparing yourself versus others, you're going to bring yourself down, which is not really good. But if you're always like, you know what, I want to be better than I am yesterday, that is always a very achievable goal. But that, that aside, um, again, like it's just really fix your eyes on what you want and what you want at the end of the day. Um, and also for me, it really came, like it really was meaningful to figure out the, how things were made and how things were founded. Um, when I got into philosophy, I, I read on how algebra was originally a philo philosophical idea. It was made by these thinkers, right? This like math, right? Like, no, this is just like, this is just like something I do, X equals Y, like all this stuff. Like, no, but it was made by a philosopher, right? Um, Pythagoras was a philosopher. Uh, I'm not going to go into the list, but it was these thinkers, right? So now when I'm doing math and I'm doing algebra, I'm like, oh, this has like a whole different meaning because they were trying to figure out the meaning of the world by doing this math problem. So like, it's just kind of like different ways to really get yourself interested in a subject. Um, but those were the two biggest ones for me. Like learn why I'm learning this, like why it was important in the whole aspect of everything. You know, why was language important? Why was philosophy? Why was history? You know, all these things are, have their own value to them. And then keep your eyes on a goal, uh, short term, you know, a mere intermediate, which is like this month or this week. And then long term, like what I want for my life really focuses you in and 
and helps you get through things that are a little bit more difficult, a little bit more boring. Yeah, for me, I, w I would say that when I wasn't loving a subject, like I would feel like I need to kind of like lean in, like lean into my friends. And even if it's not my favorite subject, just like that might be the subject that you need to like talk to other people about the most in a way, because you're just like, this is not clicking with me. Like, how is this going with you? And I would also try to find other resources where, you know, because I feel like at least in high school, like the classes that I liked the most were the classes where like the teacher was the most passionate about it. Like, you can tell if someone is interested in what they're doing or if it's just kind of like going through the motions of being in a, like doing a class. And for every subject, like someone out there is passionate about it. So I feel like even if I wasn't really feeling that from my class or from my teacher, I'd go on YouTube and like find someone and you, it's like, I'd find some per like some biology teacher in like North Dakota who wrote a song about the Krebs cycle. And it's like, I could have used this when I was trying to study the Krebs cycle because that just didn't make any sense at the time. But yeah, I guess just like be creative and reach out. This is like the thing I was saying earlier about like using your resources, but I feel like whatever whatever's not working for you, someone else has probably like made something fun for it. Just go look for that. Oh, great advice. Do you have any tips for doing well on a subject that just isn't clicking for you? Mark, you want to start? Yeah. This is something that I still think about because like I you know, I'm reflecting on like what didn't work well in high school and college that I could have done better. And there's like two things for me. One was just like, I guess it, it's all the same thing. It's like being honest with what is and isn't working. Cause like, if I'm really honest reflecting, if something wasn't working, it's usually not because like, I just couldn't get it, but maybe because I wasn't giving it the time it deserved. Like I would start all the assignments the night before they're due or like I, you know, I really rushed through the readings because I wasn't that interested. And like for the subjects when I felt like I was trying really hard and it still wasn't working, you know, in hindsight, like I didn't really ask for help very well. Like I never, like I wasn't the type of student that would go to the teacher and say like, I need help with this or in college at office hours. You know, I had friends that did that like all the time. And I just thought like, oh, I, that's, I haven't done that in the past, I don't need that. Meanwhile, I'm still struggling in the class. And I think just like being willing to change your routine and be honest with yourself with what is and isn't working is huge. And like, I wish that I had better been able to do that when, when I felt like something wasn't working for me. Good, great answer. Yeah, um, just to like continue with like Mark's thought, it's um, gotta, if you're struggling, you have to ask for help. You got to ask for help often and early. Um, same thing. Like I was so reluctant to go to office hours in the beginning of college. I was like, oh, but like I got here. I must be smart. I shouldn't be doing bad in this class. And then, you know, I finally got to that point. Like, you know what? I just got to ask someone for help. And it's, it blows my mind how much people are willing to help. And like, if, as Mark was saying, like if the teachers are really interested in the subject, they would love teaching you. You know, I remember um, there's like some of the hardest class you'll ever hear. It's like orgo chem or something like that uh, in college. But um, or even like, I think I took uh, Calc 2, Calculus 2 in, in high school and I didn't really understand it very well. Um, I remember going in like two days before a test and going to the teacher like, I think I might fail this test. And they're like, oh, no worries. I have an hour. No one else is here. Like, I'll just go over like, 400 problems with you until you understand this and then you go take the test and you get one of the highest grades in the class and everyone's jealous and you're like how'd you do it? and they're like oh the teacher helped me she basically like taught me everything I needed to know like it was it was marvelous um so yeah I again ask for help early and often um and if you don't feel comfortable with uh teachers you can start with your friends and be like hey how did you understand this there's always study groups available um especially now bringing zoom I feel like you can easily make a study group like, hey, everyone who thinks, you know, physics is super hard and I thought physics was super hard, um, which is normal and I'm still going to hopefully be a doctor one day. So don't worry about those things. But 
Um, yeah, uh, it just always reach out, be vocal. Um, and also it's good to remember that it's okay to be wrong. Um, it's okay to do bad on a test, right? Right now, things like a test is going to hurt you, right? You're going to take this test and like, oh no, I studied, I thought I was going to do great. But then five years from then, you're going to be like, oh, I don't even remember what the questions were. 10 years from then, it's going to be like, oh, I had a test. Like I took this, like, you're going to like, then like 20 years, you're going to be like teaching your, like your kid and like, oh, I remember how math used to be. And this isn't math anymore. Right. Like the Incredibles quote, like it's, it's okay to be wrong. And just remember every day you're going against your yesterday, right? Every day, like I did that today. What am I going to do tomorrow? What am I going to do the day after? And let's always constantly move forward. Um, because that will keep you motivated and keep you in the game. You don't want to get out of the game because then you're going to lose, right? If you don't play the game, you're going to automatically lose. If you keep your head in the game, if you keep trying to be better than you were yesterday, even if it isn't clicking or isn't working out right away, um, you're going to do well. You're going to do great. One thing I want to add to that, to the, both of your statements right there is asking a teacher for help, okay? If you want a teacher to be passionate about what they're teaching, be a student who's willing to learn because that keeps a teacher passionate. Trust me, <laughs> I know. So not that I'm a teacher, but homeschooling, you know, if I had a, if I had a willing student that that kept me passionate, passionate and motivated. So anyway, all right. So last question, at least last written question here. How do you study collabor collaboratively with peers in the era of COVID? How is that going for you? I can start, I can start this one because I'm in like a mood of, of like going. Um, so one thing, two things that I do right now a lot, um, like this, I go on Zoom a lot. Um, our school is hybrid right now. So there's a lot of going online and talking to them. And um, if you don't like Zoom, there's also Discord. I'm pretty sure some of y'all in high school have heard about it. I have my own gaming Discord and I have a Dungeons and Dragons Discord. So like, I know like there's different platforms um, but really like there's a lot of online resources that are really helpful and then there's also it's not too cold outside um, you can go for walks get your mask make sure you're being protected and safe but you can go for a walk and just get your ideas out of your head and like just say them out loud um, I don't know if you guys know about Watson and Crick yet that's like a, the guys who invented DNA basically um, well they kind of like stole the idea from a female scientist but anyway um, these guys and like figured out DNA and they were famous for going for really long walks and going to the bar and doing this. Like they always joked around like these guys are never in their laboratory. And it's because they thought better walking around and like airing out their ideas rather than a stuffy location. So yes, Zoom is great. You know, we wanna be safe, you wanna be good. Um, but if you need to get outside, you know, put your mask on and just go for a walk and really clear your head. You know, you can go a walk with your friends or even like a sibling or something, just like talk about what's going on um, and it'll help you understand and help you get your mind back in the zone. Yeah, totally echo going outside. Um, I think for me in classes, like the classes that I felt the best about studying for were ones where there was like a class-wide kind of like message or like Facebook messenger or text group. And if no one has suggested making one, I would say to just be, be that person and be like, you know, I don't know how often we're going to use this, but here is like our class group chat. And like, if it exists, people will send messages to it, I promise. So just have that for any class. Cool. Those are really great ideas. One last question from me. Now, I've heard some pretty full schedules in there. We've gotten our fun in there. We've gotten our studies in there and all of that. How important on top of all of that is resting? And do you ever rest? <laughs> it is the most important. Um, I will be completely honest and say I always had trouble with resting. Um, but that being said, and I am not a full doctor yet, but the the most thing I can say with my year and a half in this is you need to sleep. You will not learn anything if you don't sleep, right? Sleep is for consul, uh, consul, cons I can't remember the word right now. I'm having trouble. So yeah, consolidating. There we go. Too much, 
too much lungs on my mind right now. Um, but yeah, you need to consolidate your thoughts, right? Sleeping gives you time for your body to relax, gives you time for your mind to relax. It lets your, your short-term memory go into your long-term memory. Um, and there's so many studies that will talk about you being more upset, more agitated, less able to learn if you have less than your seven to eight hours of sleep, right? Um, again, we are not perfect. Uh, we are medical students. We are we're college students. We're going to be doctors one day. Sleep is hard to come by, and we understand that. But there is, you, we need it. There's, I, I can't say anything else, but sleep and rest is important. Just as important as studying, just as important as dying time with your friends. Um, you know, you got to schedule that in too. You know, at some point, you got to be like, you know what? I'm done. Like this, whatever I am doing right now will be picked up tomorrow morning because I need to sleep. I need my seven to eight hours. I don't know, Mark, what else do you want to add? You, you covered it all, sleep. And I mean, I, I just think about what I was saying earlier about how when I would focus on something and just get it done, like I would have so much more time to have my rest later. It's like the days that I feel like I'm not rested, I was only half doing my work the whole day. And then it's like 11.30 p.m. And I'm like, oh, God, am I like I I'm barely finishing and then you don't want to go to sleep right away because you haven't had a break and so then you stay up on your phone until 12 30 then you get up at seven and I don't know you know it's like this whole process it just it like it snowballs where if you don't give yourself time to decompress before you go to sleep like you're gonna go to sleep late so focus and then you have time to like decompress 8 p.m 9 p.m 10 p.m and i feel like that would really help me have a better schedule also the the there's a myth of that you can catch up on sleep you cannot catch up on sleep sleep has to be a regular thing you know you cannot sleep four hours and four hours like oh on saturday i'll sleep 12 like no because you're also going to wake up tired because that's more than your body needs you got to make sure it is a regular thing every day you're getting this seven to eight you know some people can do a little bit less. Some people need a little bit more, but you got to make sure it's regular and you're feeling good in the morning. If you're not feeling well rested in the morning, then you have to adjust your schedule. Very good points. You guys have just shared a wealth of information today and we can't thank you enough for having joined us for this video or for this um, Zoom interview and this is going to be recorded and it's going to be put out there for many others to see. And I want, just want you to, to know how much we appreciate you taking the time to do this. You've given us some great ideas and um, we will definitely be sure that as many people as possible get these, these ideas. So the last thing, so I thank you both tremendously for having done this for us. And we um, want to remind anybody who is viewing this that we are doing um, the book, A Heart and a Body in the World, as a um, over a three weeks or a three session Zoom um, book discussion. And we'd like to invite all teens to join us who are interested. Victor and Mark are going to join us as well, and we're really excited about that. So um, call the library, get your book um, reserved, and we'll let you know when it's available for curbside pickup. So we're going to sign off now, but again, just can't thank you enough, guys, and I hope that your studies are going well, and we will see you on the 17th for our first Zoom discussion book discussion and uh, we'll be seeing you more throughout the, the rest of the year. So we are grateful and you guys have a good day and um, until we meet again. Okay. All right. Bye, Thanks teens. For You're welcome. Bye teens. You have a great week too. See you later. Bye bye. done recording. Nope, still is.